Welcome back to the channel, everybody. May is around the corner, and what's happening in May is the Wild Turkey Mine out here in Northeast Washington, which is a fee dig site, will be opening up for public digging. Now, I have a bunch of this material. I've gone to the site four times, and I've learned a lot about the type of material that you can get there, and I thought today, since it's coming up, and it's gonna be a lot of fun, and I plan on going back, I thought we could talk about some of this material talk a little bit about the history of the mine and all of that good stuff and look at some good examples that I have. I've learned a lot cutting and processing the material. I'd like to share that with you today. So the Wild Turkey Mine, former Jim McGrath Quarry, uh, was a magnesite mine. Out here in Northeast Washington, we have a belt, the magnesite belt of Northeast Washington. And that encompasses a many different mines uh, that were primarily worked between World War I and World War II, give or take, okay? And one of the things that comes along with, you know, these uh, magnesite, dolomite, calcite, um, you know, marbles, all of that stuff is serpentine. Now, you can find serpentine throughout the magnesite belt, and generally it's going to be in that forest green kind of uh, color, and it, it can be very nice. Um, the wild turkey, however, has very neon green serpentine, um, trade name of Healerite, but it's serpentine. Um, and there's a number of different varieties of it with some interesting inclusions, and it's, a, it's very cool material. I, I like it. I thought I would share with you some of the selection that I have gotten from there because I think it's, it's pretty cool. Um, first thing, um, a certain amount of the material is very fractured up. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that because uh, a decent amount of the material that I have collected from Wild Turkey Mine, I probably should have left it and probably should have gotten some different material. Um, and maybe you can learn, learn from that as well. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, there's material like this, right? Like this. And all of those lines you see, it's, it's actually kind of polished. Um, all of those lines are cracks. Now, a lot of these have been kind of healed. Some of these with that white, that's chrysotile. That's some right, right there, okay? And I know some people uh, freak out over chrysotile. And a lot of the white fibrous stuff that you're going to find out there is chrysotile is a natural asbestos if you want to go go that route which is very very different than the type of highly processed asbestos asbestos whatever you want to say uh, that made its way into like mastic glues and insulation and different building products very very different so um you know it's all about any <clears throat> anytime we're talking about anything kind of toxic you have to uh bring up it's the amount of exposure you have right? Do I want to grind this into my face every single day and grind it up and inhale it every day for decades and decades? No, no, I do not. But going out to a mine one day, a couple times a year, no problem. So material like this, uh, when cut thin, has a tendency to break up, which is a downside. That's a downside. I mean, you can see that there are some solid bits in there. Um, there are interesting inclusions and in stuff. There's a lot to look at here that I have. So a piece that I would consider better, better than this is this right here. Here we have a piece that is very, very solid. Okay, no fractures going through it. Um, this, uh, you know, I inspected it with the water bottle and made sure it was all good. This is great. This is a good piece, okay? Um, and you can obviously get a lot out of it. So a piece that is tempting to get, but maybe go for these, you know? A piece like this. So this right here, as cool as it looks, probably is going to have a bunch of fractures in it. Now, I don't know for sure, but... Um, I think in my experience of cutting this stuff, 
less solid, less solid. Um, and uh, I do have a potential fix for some of this less solid material, but very cool, bright, bright green. Some of it, like this, has kind of a more blue green to it is also quite good. Um, this has some copper sulfates in it. If you looked at the thumbnail of this uh, video, you can see a piece that has a lot of copper sulfate in it, uh, a lot of that, that baby blue. And, uh, you know, it, it definitely is interesting when that comes up. In the past year, more of that material is mined out there. So hopefully there'll be more coming out this year. Uh, there are pieces like this that have these little kind of gray spots in it, which is actually um, pretty cool when cut and polished. Magnesio chromite is what that is. And what that can look like from the outside is kind of like this. And you see those black spots. And that's what it can look like when you cut it. Pretty, pretty good. Um, this piece is quite solid, quite solid. Um, very, very happy with it. So that's a good one. Another piece with uh, those spots. That's a good piece. Kind of looks like this. So neat to see those types of inclusions in the material. And this is coming out of the same hole, basically, you know, like the same hole. Another piece with some inclusions is this right here. Um, this piece, did you hear that? A little piece just fell off. <laughs> uh, is uh, quite interesting. You can see these little pink, pink spots. And that's what that looks like when cut. And what you're seeing there is magnesite crystals that grew in the serpentine. Very neat to see. Very neat. Um, I guess I didn't have to hold, I could have held up this little end cut, that would have been better. But, um, a couple of things. Um, so here is a thick piece, and you can see here, it kind of has a polish. And actually, really what polished was that magnesite and the serpentine, not so much, which is interesting. Well, when we look at this up close, right, you can see the cracks. In the green, see all those little lines? Those are all fractures. Now, on the back side here, you can see more pronounced fractures. So what I did with this was I, heat, I heated up the rock and I put some CA glue on here and it seeped in and I was able to do this with it. And I think that's fine being that this is a big thick piece and it was kind of a trial to see how that would, how that would really work out. Um, here is just kind of a more standard slab of this stuff um, as about the thickness of what you would typically do. And, right, very, very fragile as is. Um, here is a piece, and you can kind of see that texture on there that I treated with CA glue. And this is still pretty fragile. Not the, not, not ideal, okay? I can just snap it. So when you have these slabs, it's like, what do you, what do, you do with it, you know? Well, um, I took a piece of it and uh, I cut it kind of thin on the thinner side and I cut a very thin slab of basalt and I epoxied the serpentine to the basalt and then I put CA glue on it, which definitely helped a lot in holding it all, all together. <laughs> um, then I cut it out and I took it over to the wheel and uh, we ended up with some pieces that look just like this. And we have these uh, backed pieces. Now I first kind of thought of this or you know, whatever, I didn't make, I didn't come up with this as a, a, a plan really. Uh, Lapidary Dave's video um, with the guys from Spencer Opal, they will do uh, uh, basalt-backed opal. So I was like, well, this is kind of a fractured up stuff. Maybe it'd be good to try it out. So I'm just, this is a proof of concept here, proof of concept. So I did that and uh, ground all the glue off of it and it's kind of holding up pretty good, pretty good. Well, 
I wanted to see how good it would hold up with the backer. So don't judge this cabochon, okay? Because I'm not a cabochon guy. I don't make cabochons. I, you know, do specimens and stuff. So uh, this is only taken up to a 1200 grit uh, currently. And uh, there we go, okay? So we have this cab right here and it is backed. And uh, overall, I think it's uh, pretty good for what it is. I took, I mean, that's quite thin. That's quite thin. So I took that thin material, glue on it, epoxied the back, and it came out quite, quite good. Um, would I do this with other material? Absolutely, absolutely I would. I think this is a, a viable option for some of the serpentine coming from the wild turkey mine. If you have some of this stuff that looks cool, I mean, that's a cool, that's cool looking. It's fun, right? Um, but fractures, fractures. So um, that said, I hope uh, to maybe see some of you out there. I mean, uh, I've, uh, I think it'll be a fun outing. And you know what? Um, obviously, I have no affiliation with those guys, uh, but it's close to my house. What can I say? What can I say? It's, it's a, a close place for me to go visit, and uh, it's enjoyable. So... Maybe I'll see you guys out there. Um, thanks for just coming, hanging out with me in the shop, listening to what I have to say. And uh, with that said, I might, I might finish this. I might finish it. Um, and uh, I'll catch you in the next video.